Hey guys, Modelling Weekly here. This week's video will be a little different than usual as I'll be presenting all of the amazing submissions that you guys sent in for our recent group build. If you weren't aware of the group build up until now, starting in March and ending earlier this month over on my Discord server, I've been hosting a World War II bombers group build where the idea was for all of us to build any purpose-built bomber aircraft that served during the Second World War. Also included in the group build was a light-hearted competition where the winner receives a social media shout-out in this video. So without further ado, let's get into the entries, starting with the non-competition builds. There were only three builds in this category, and two of which are by me and my GB mod Aiden, so let's cover these two first. You'll remember my build of the Pizadel 37, as I've already posted a full build for this kit on my channel. As a result, I won't go into too much depth on this aircraft, so if you want to find out more, there'll be a link in the description. Next up, we have Aiden's build, which is a wonderful 48th scale A26 Invader from ICM, alongside some Eduard Photo Etch and a set of aftermarket decals. This is certainly a very impressive build, and I absolutely love the effect that he achieved with the bare metal finish. The level of weathering is also very nice, and I think realistic as well, as it's very easy to over or underdo weathering, and I think this level is on point. Overall, a very high quality submission from our group build mod. Finally, in the non-competition category, we have Bullnut, with his brilliant take on Airfix's Bristol Beaufort, uh, which is a recently retooled kit. It's a real shame he didn't enter this into the competition, as it's a very nice build. Those canopies have been masked and painted up very crisply, and that Fleet Air I'm two-tone is definitely up to scratch. Decals all look in order as well, so once again we have a wonderful submission for the GB. So, with the non-competition entries covered, we can move on to the competition lot. In total, there are 11 entries in this category, with double submissions from two people. This was super exciting to see, as I definitely did not expect this much enthusiasm for our first community group build. In order to go through these submissions, I'll first show the majority of people's builds in no particular order, with the top three scores at the end in ascending order. Let's begin. First up we have Joe So's entry, a very impressive hand-painted B-17 from Airfix, which I believe is built up from one of their recently reissued kits with a colourful paint scheme. The most striking aspect of Joe So's build here is definitely the wonderful paint job, those mask lines are very clean, and from what I can see, there are almost no brush strokes. There is a certain texture to the bare metal, though this is completely forgivable, as it is for sure one of the hardest colours to paint by hand. Both me and Aiden were super impressed with this build, so a massive good job to you. Following Joso's entry, let's take a look at Rorex's submissions. Yep, he's got two entries in this group build, and they are both brilliant builds. Let's take a look at his B24 Liberator to start off with. Now, Rorex's B24 here is quite the unique build. Aside from the brilliant, smooth, hand-painted surface which is undeniably very impressive, the kit that he chose to build this aircraft up from didn't include a glass nose element. This didn't stop him though, as he simply created an imitation glass element by shaping another kit part with the help of model filler. The glass was then painted grey with the struts in the usual camouflage colour. Well, Rorex, on the whole, it's a lovely build despite the kit's age and shortcomings. Rorex's next entry was a depiction of the classic old Vickers Wellington. From what I understand, this was still a very old kit, though this time it appears all the parts were present. This of course means that there was nothing in his way of creating a clean, crisp model. I forgot to mention with the B24, but Rorex's ability to create a smooth white surface with a brush is certainly impressive. Sometimes a lot of us airbrush users struggle to do it. On the whole, those were some lovely submissions from Rorex, and thank you very much for taking part in the GB. Next up in the list is Beaver Chicken's FW200 Condor, a Revell 72nd scale kit. This is for sure a very different subject to the usual bomber lineup, so we were very glad to see this kit in the group build. The paint scheme, once again, is a very nice element of the build, and it really brings everything together nicely, which is important given the size of the aircraft. Very well done for that. The decals also appear to be very nicely applied, with all of the squadron markings and crosses in order. Once again, another outstanding entry for the group build. Thanks for taking part, Beaver. On to the next entry, another Wellington this time, and it's the Airfix equivalent built up by Mr. Bob. An airbrush was used to paint this kit, and he definitely put it to good use. 
I can see some great skills developing here. That soft edged camo is well on the way to perfection and once again that decal application is pretty much on point. I'm also a big fan of the open bombay, displaying all the ordnance loaded in and ready. Overall a very effective build and thank you Mr Bob for taking part as well. Now we have quite a special entry from Jack's Bricks. His build was a depiction of a glass nosed mosquito painted in a photo recon scheme. The sky blue overall that the aircraft wears is brilliant to look at and I'm particularly a fan of the delicate chipping that Jack has applied to the leading edges of the propeller blades. Very nice touch. Additionally, the basic panel line wash really helps to bring out those wonderful Tamiya surface details. Once again a brilliant entry, thank you very much Jack. Into the last couple in this category now. Remember, this list at the moment isn't in any order so don't feel any less valued depending on where your build is, they are all brilliant. Let's now take a look at Jan Timmer's build which I believe is the biggest entry in the GB. He submitted his take on Ravel's 148th scale B17, specifically the Memphis Bell, a real icon so I'm sure you've all heard of it. Jan has really gone to town on this build with a lovely paint job and pretty damn good decal application. He's also had a great go at engine and oil stains which I think really helps to bring out a strong aesthetic to the build. There's also some nice chipping in places which again is a nice touch. Many thanks Jan for the brilliant entry. Finally in this category is Jar Jar Thanos' entry, a build of a Ravel 72nd scale Lancaster. So glad we could get a Lank in the group build, it wouldn't be complete without one. Through following the build on my discord server it became apparent that there were certain issues with the paintwork. However, Jar Jar worked through all of these issues and in the end produced a more than acceptable result. She was even able to try out a new brand of paint, which from what I can see went very well for her. The yellow accents of the scheme are particularly nice as well. So yet another brilliant entry, thanks again for taking part. So it's now time for the very final category, the top 3 scorers in the competition. As I said before, I'll show these guys in ascending order with the winner announced last. Also, just as a little bit of context, all of the competition entries were scored and ranked behind the scenes by both me and Aiden to deduce the top three builds. It was super hard as there were so many wonderful builds that we think should have been in the top three. To show how close it was, I'll present the scores for our chosen three, so let's begin. In third position we have a beautiful Heinkel 111 built by Beaver, meaning it is in fact his second entry. This is an absolutely wonderful model with so many amazing aspects. For starters, the paint job is brilliantly crisp and smooth with perfect colours being utilised. Aiden and I were also huge fans of the panel line wash which is applied perfectly to bring out all of those panel lines and other details. This detailed build scored a solid 20 out of 25 so a massive well done to you Beaver. Let's move on to the build in second. In second place, half a point ahead of the Heinkel, yep this was seriously close, is PPA Kuma's insane take on the B24 Liberator. Man, I can't believe you achieved such an amazing result with the kit featuring raised panel lines. The use of oils here to bring out the surface detail was almost entirely perfect and I think the only way it could have been better is if they were blended even smoother, though this is a tiny thing and you should be insanely proud of your build. The decals are also very nicely done and the way they have been integrated with the weathering is on point. You guys made this so hard for us. PPA Kuma, very nice job with this kit. Right, here we are, the winning spot. Before I announce the winner of the World War II Bombers group build competition, I'd first like to say a massive thank you to all that participated and helped with picking the topic. You guys are brilliant and I hope the next GB is just as successful. Also Aiden WK, my GB mod, deserves the biggest thank you of all. Without him this truly would have been impossible as I'm far too unorganised to work through all of the entries on my own as well as all the planning that goes into it. Aiden, a massive thank you to you and I look forward to working with you on the next GB. Now let's get to it. In first place with a score of 22 out of 25 we have a beautiful Dornier 17 built by Hazard aka Harry. This is an absolutely inspiring model, you can just feel the experience and skill put into creating it. The camouflage is flawless, the canopy struts are sharp and accurate and the decals are on point. It's just on the whole a really nice build. I strongly encourage you to check out more of his work which you can find on his Instagram, Harry's Models, for which there is a link in the description. 
I'll also be doing a community post and Instagram story to let people know about his work. As I record this, his Instagram account is sitting at 855 followers, so let's try and push him up to his first thousand. That would be incredible and I'm sure he'd be really happy about it. Well, that's everything in the group build covered. Once again, a massive thank you to all that took part, and a special thanks once again to Aiden. I really hope you guys are looking forward to the next group build, which will probably happen sometime between the start and middle of July. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye! Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like and comment your favourite build down below. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.